supposed to be looking for what the uh, other Indian tribes called the Chitao. That was the Com Comanches. The government wanted to make contact with the Comanches. And all I can say is, here again, it was really fortunate they didn't find them. Because that would have been the end. The, the, the Comanches were a very fierce tribe, and I don't think they would have dallied with, with this expedition. But they are, they are <coughs> having some difficulty. Quite right. Finding the impossibility of performing the voyage in the time proposed, I determined to spare no pairs to, to no pains to accomplish every object, even though it should have lied me spending another winter. He's saying they didn't think it would take this long to get out there and back. And just like with the Lewis and Clark's expedition, the people back in Washington that were organizing this mission had no idea how big this country is. They thought, oh yeah, they'll be out there and you know, be through the summer and they'll be back in the fall. They had no idea. So they are finding that it's going to take long, it's going to be a little harder. And yet, they're along the, the river, it's morning light, it's beautiful, and this, this song comes to mind. And they are currently near present day Lamar, Colorado. They've come into Colorado. Except for a crucial difference. The Spanish are on the south side, which is Mexico, and our party is on the north side, which is understood to be the US. So they are near Fort Lyon now, which is near Los Angeles, moving further west. And Pike writes in his journal, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I thought I could distinguish a mountain to our right, which appeared like a small blue cloud. Viewed it with the spyglass and was still more confirmed in my conjecture, yet only communicated it to Dr. Robinson, who was in front with me. But in half an hour, they appeared in full view before us. When our small party arrived on the hill, they with one accord gave three cheers to the Mexican mountains. That's what Pike first names his namesake, the Mexican mountains. Sees them out there by Los Angeles. And if you are traveling, like I have, between Los Angeles and La Junta, there's one part of the prairie when you're going across it, you'll come to a rise, and from there it's a vivid view of Pikes Peak. And I'm, I know that's where these guys were. Well, actually, of course that's where they were, because we've been there, and there's also a monument right now. But it, it's very impressive. When you come to that one point, you can see very plainly those mountains. So Pike called it the Mexican Mountains. Well, the long expedition came through in 1812. And then the long, uh, uh, the long captain, long, his surgeon was Edwin James. And he sent a party up there and they actually reached the top of Pike's Peak. That and so that, from that point on it was named James Peak. Until John Charles Fremont comes through in 1842. Yes, the Pathfinder. And he writes in his journal, that they saw Pike's Peak. He refers to it as Pike's Peak, and that stuck. So, they're going to fight and thank John Charles Fremont. So, the, uh, you know, as I said before, we had three guys that were doing this, and I'm doing it all around. No matter what instruments I do. So 
this is a tune that is sort of contemporary to the time. And that was when it was uh, Horatio Nelson, the Admiral, had a triumph. The British fleet had a triumph against the combined Spanish and French and destroyed their, their ships. And that was a terrible blow to France. And it inspired the tune, Bonaparte's Retreat. And this is one of the earlier forms of it. Again, this is the film that was in the movie, folks.
in the world to go evangelize at this time. They are moving up. So this, this song came to mind. It's called The Lady's Breast Knot. And this is a colonial dance tune.